Hi. Thank you for coming here today, and thank you for giving me an opportunity to speak. Uh, I'd like to use that opportunity to say a few words about um, our company and our product and how we're using Debian. So the company is called Spotify, and it's a Luxembourg and Stockholm-based uh, startup company that was uh, founded in August 2006 by uh, two guys. One of them is uh, Daniel Ek. He's a serial entrepreneur who's previously worked at companies like Skype, eBay, Yahoo, and he's founded and sold a number of uh, successful Swedish startups previously. And the other guy is uh, Martin Lorenzon. He founded the Swedish web advertising company Tradeabler that is now listed on the Stockholm Stock Exchange. So this talk consists of three parts. The first is about the product, the second is about the business, and the third is about the technology that we're using and how we think about technology. That's okay, I can use this one. Okay, so the first part about the product. Um, so what we're building here is a, a streaming music service for the internet. Um, and since we're streaming, there is uh, no downloading. You don't need to wait until the file is downloaded. You can just start listening to the music immediately. Um, there's no need to store the music locally. There's no need to waste gigabytes of storage space just because you want to listen to music. There's no need to to bring your gigabytes of music everywhere where you want to listen to music. Um, and what we're trying to do here is bring fun back to music. Uh, I want to make it easy for people to listen to music, and we want to make it easy for people to discover new stuff. So we want people to be able to just click around and browse through our user interface, and if they find, if they find some nice stuff, they can just drag the URI to their IM client and send it to a friend, and the friend can be listening to the same music just seconds later. So in order to support this, we built a client application. Uh, it's available for Windows, Mac OS X, and Linux, or at least it will be. Um, the Windows executable is a single .exe file that's just 700 kilobytes. And actually, 200 of those is a Windows Vista high-resolution icon. So it's a really tight application. Um, and this, this will make it easy for us to port it to cell phones and embedded systems down the road. Now for the second part of the talk. I'd like to say something about our business model and explain what we're doing. So um, this will be a free service, um, which is supported by advertising, uh, meaning that we'll have, um, sorry, we'll have audio spots, like on a commercial radio station. But uh, we're trying to do them much better targeted than what you can do with traditional radio. So we're trying to bring performance-based marketing to the radio. And um, the other reason which makes this possible is that broadband or high-speed consumer internet connections have become cheap and ubiquitous. Uh, probably most of you in this room have had broadband connections forever, but these days even your grandma has one, making streaming possible. So the internet is everywhere, uh, which is why we think that there's no need anymore to have the music yourself. You can just use services like ours. There's no need to have all these gigabytes of music yourself. Um, so both the music, uh, both the music and advertising industry is changing, and the music industry is starting to open up to new models. Uh, some analysts say that Christmas season 2007 will be the last season for the CD. Um, after that, everything will be online. Um, and they're, they're finally starting to um, try to find new ways to make money of music online. For instance, just a couple of months ago, EMI finally started selling uh, DRM-free music on iTunes. So those are the kind of opportunities we want to make use of. Uh, also, the advertising industry um, have been spoiled by the success of web advertising. So they want the targeting that you can get through web advertising, uh, for instance, through search engine advertising for traditional media like radio and TV commercials. They also want to be able to get immediate feedback, and they want the transparency of online campaigns, meaning that they want to know why a particular user 
responded to their ad and how they how they came to their website, for instance. So we're trying to connect the dots here between the changes in the technology making broadband available everywhere and the music industry opening up to new ideas and the advertising industry wanting uh, new ways to sell their messages. This uh, means that the Spotify model becomes a possibility or we'd like to think even a necessity. Nothing is stronger than an idea whose time has come. It was uh, Victor Hugo who said that. And uh, for us, that's Spotify. So if, if we don't do this, someone else will. Change is inevitable. <laughs> so this is um, the third part of my talk, uh, which was about the technology that we're using and how we think about technology. Uh, so we have a technology strategy which is based on two ideals. The first is that you shouldn't shy away from hard problems. And the reason for that is if the problem you're working with is not hard, then why bother? If it's, if it's easy and no one else has solved it, it's probably not that important. And if it's really an important problem, then uh, it's bound to be hard. So the second is that you shouldn't uh, reinvent the wheel uh, and you shouldn't fall for the not invented here syndrome. But that doesn't mean that you should be afraid of doing things differently. We're building a lot of technology in-house at Spotify. For instance, as I said, we have our own client application uh, and we have our own streaming protocol and we also have our own peer-to-peer -peer network which we use to offload our central servers and keep our bandwidth costs low. We also have our own storage system, which supports our specific application very well. Though, of course, it's built on off-the-shelf hardware. And we're also building our own advertising system to be able to do better targeting. So um, my idea is that the core components are worth doing yourself, because if a component is really central to what you're trying to do, even uh, small improvements lead to big results, so it's, it's all on the margin. But uh, what I think you shouldn't do is build uh, what's basically support infrastructure. Uh, and that's anything that's not specific to what you're doing. That's anything that everybody else is doing as well. That you should get off the shelf, or in our case, that usually means off the internet. Because pretty much all software that you're using, at least on the back end, is uh, free and open source software. Uh, and there are many reasons for that. Um, the two most important are the key properties of free and open source software. And the first one is that it's free as in beer, meaning that there is no attached cost, there's no acquisition cost for the software. You can just download it and start using it immediately. And the second is that it's free as in speech or in freedom meaning that you have the ability and the right to alter the software and adapt it to your particular needs and redistribute it. Um, and these, these two properties lead to another thing which is very beneficial for us and for open source these days, and that's because that's that uh, open source and free software is very well known to a new generation of hackers. Anyone who learns or who learned programming the last half decade or went to, to college and and learn computer science or programming during the last five years is bound to have come in touch with the free and open source software, um, at least the good ones who are actually interested in what they're doing, because it's, it's, it's everywhere and it's so easy to just get it off the internet and start trying out. It makes it very accessible. However, we're taking um, the use of free and open source software one step further in the sense um, that we're using Debian GNU Linux as an integral part of our, of our um, deployment infrastructure. So these days everybody uses Linux, at least startups, because they're usually cash strapped and want something cheap that just works. Um, so choosing a Linux distribution is uh, part of the fundamental technology choices that any startup company needs to make these days. And usually it works this way, that you evaluate the distributions in terms of price, support, and some measure of quality, and then you come to a decision. However, in our case, um, Debian is just not just a distribution. So the reason for that is we're not using it only as a platform to support our system, but um, 
the, the first reason is that there's, there's a lot of open source software in Debian, and there's a lot of open source software that we use. So, um, and, and all, all of the software that we use is, is in Debian. I mean, there's over 18,000 packages in the Debian distribution, so chances are if there's some new open source library that you want to use, it's already packaged, so you don't need to handle security updates and, and installation everything yourself. It's already done for you. And the second reason for using Debian is that um, the Debian project builds a lot of infrastructure, and it turns out that the needs of the Debian project and the needs of a company building a large-scale internet application aren't that different. Um, so why not just use it when it's already there? So as I said, we have a deployment system which is built entirely on Debian, meaning that uh, all backend components are packages, thanks to Andreas Schuldoy. Um, so if you want to install, for instance, a new storage node, this is what you do. It's a single command and you have the components installed. Um, however, we wanted to automate even that, so that's why we started looking at something called fully automated installation. So if you want to check it out yourself, um, it's normally called Phi, there's a URL. Um, so what Phi does is that uh, when we want to set up a new server, we just plug it in and we add a line to the Phi configuration and that's it. What happens then is that the server boots off the network and uh, Phi handles bootstrapping of the system and package installation and configuration and then the system announces its availability to the rest of the system and it starts receiving traffic and it's all automated. So um, when you have this new great idea that you want to that you want to launch and build a company around, it's easy to forget about installation and deployment because it's it's usually boring and you want to focus on what's actually your application. However, um, it's required if you want to scale and uh, unless it's going to be big, why bother doing it at all? So sooner or later you need to start thinking about deployment and installation and um, with Debian we get it for free, almost. Um, there's always some configuration you need to do. So um, the importance of good infrastructure is that it makes mundane tasks easy and hard problems solvable, but you shouldn't build it all yourself. So you should focus on the hard, new, and fun stuff, um, because solving hard problems and building a great product and having a lot of fun, <laughs> that's uh, Spotify for us. And of course, uh, we're hiring, so if you think any of this sounds uh, mildly interesting, um, you could go to this URL or you can send an email. Um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to come here and thank you to all Debian developers who have made this possible. That's the reason why we're also sponsoring this conference to show our appreciation for the work you do. Um, and if you want to try this out, uh, once we actually roll out our beta program outside of Sweden, um, register at our website and we'll send you an invitation token. Now, I um, wanted to give you a quick demonstration of what the application actually looks like. Okay, so what you're seeing here, um, actually the screen resolution is a bit low, but what you're seeing here is um, the Mac client, which is still an alpha. This is the first time it's actually shown to anyone externally. <laughs> um, I wanted to show you the, the Linux client, which is compiled with Winelib, but it isn't really that stable yet. So this is the Mac version. Um, this is um, what we call the radio mode. Um, so here you can select the genre and then time frame and we give you some music. Now the cool thing about this, although it's all streaming, um, it's so fast so that you, ha you, have, uh, you can't tell the difference from having the music locally. I'll show you what it looks like when you're browsing through the song.
So that's the radio mode, but you can also search for the music that you want to play yourself. So here you get a number of, of hits uh, based on a text search, basically. Um, so this is like any ordinary search engine. But then you can also start browsing through the system. So if I click Madonna over here in Artists, So you can tell by the looks, this is still an alpha version. So it's still the same thing, and you can just start creating your playlists, and you can just drag the songs you like over there. So it's like having all the world's music on your hard disk, but you don't need to care about it. It's all streaming. So that's what Spotify looks like. Thank you. Hi. Um. Um, how do I switch this on? It's on now. Great. I'm Andreas Schulder. I'm the resident Debian developer at Spotify. And um, I've been working at Spotify now for like um, three, four months, I think. I've been a Debian developer much longer, like since 2000. And um, when I prepared, pre prepared this talk, I um, tried to compare both Spotify and Debian on different levels, and I noticed that it was, there was a striking similarity between the, 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 the two. I wanted to, dis, um, to, to split these similar similarities up into two bigger sections, and th those are the social similarities and the technical ones. On the social side, I think both company and um, Debian have a very strong vision. And um, compared to visions that you put on, put on the wall in a golden frame, um, those in Debian and Spotify are actually alive and have power to change the way you get up in the morning. You um, actually can draw power or energy from them. The uh, vision of, De of Debian, of, of course, is to have a stable and reliable and free operating system and build that and make it a great thing. On the Spotify side of things, we have a, um, the vision of building a high quality, great music streaming system. And that is, um, and on both sides, we have a very strong focus on quality and both the project and at work we draw, draw um, much pride from the quality that we are producing. Then we have a fun and friendly working environment in both the project and at work. Um, it's actually um, very common to, uh, to get recognition and appreciation from the work you're doing because um, it's, yeah, well, people are actually forthcoming with a praise and stuff. That is helpful to keep going. Um, another thing that both the project, Debian, the Debian project at, at, and on Spotify, um, we, we actually um, plan fun. We, we are willing and um, open to give lots of space, or not only space, but also little money to fun. This Debian conference on the, the Deb Camp actually are a planned event to give Debian developers and interested people a place to um, meet, to enjoy each other, to um, uh, yeah, to have fun together. And at, Sp at Spotify we have some parties, some, sometimes we meet um, and go out for food. That's not a very common thing, or not, uh, not at all um, uh, a given thing to, to companies. And 
another important thing is the um, to me at least is to have other smart people around me to share stuff with the the final social aspect that I enjoy at Spotify is that people actually um, are open to friendships. And that's the same in Debian. People don't guard themselves. They're not afraid of um, making mistakes or not, um, not to be authentic or open to new people. They are actually willing to invest themselves and share what they are, what they are about themselves. Um, those were the social aspects that stroke me. And then the, the technical side, Andreas mentioned several already. We do run all the back end, but also the um, lots of workstations and desk desktops at work on Debian. Most developers work on Debian. The whole software that we are using at Debian, uh, at Spotify, is packaged as Debian um, packages, and we also use the Debian uh, workflow of putting it in repositories, unstable testing, and stable for deployment and testing and bug fixing. We also um, use pBuilder, the um, automatic build daemon that, um, that is in Debian for automatically building our packages. Whenever someone checks in software into the re re repository, it, 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 get auto it gets automatically built and um, deployed on a test system to see if it still works. And at some point in the very, very near future, we want to have automatic tests run against this um, automatically installed um, system to see if, if it still integrates well in the infrastructure, if any new bugs or features crept in. <laughs> and um, that does help us to raise quality and um, make our system stable and reliable. Then we have, we use Phi, as Andreas also men mentioned earlier. We use it to um, make the deployment phase, which is otherwise time consuming and boring, um, quick and easy. And it's uh, also used to build the test systems. We are running in Xen, which is a virtualiz virtualization um, project. So we can do all the tests in virtual machines without actually using real hardware and needing to touch our real servers at all. The software, the, the, the support we are getting is excellent, partly because Spotify decided to hire a Debian developer. They have very good access to the Debian community, to the support channels that Debian itself has. There are IRC channels, there are mailing lists, there are people that you can just call if you need to. And these people are actually very helpful and very forthcoming with information. They don't keep stuff back for themselves. They, they are willing to, to help you solve your problems. And um, with Debian, we, we don't have any problems at all to find people who can solve any problem that we might in, in, in run into. Um, it's actually a very easy going and um, Um, very nice uh, working environment there, both in the Debian and in the Spotify environment. For me, um, Debian and Spotify are actually the receipt, uh, the recipe of putting together um, both the social joy of working together in this way and the te technology of a proven um, and stable Linux distribution is a, r a recipe for success. And it, it is, I really enjoy 
um, being part of this and see this put to use. And I would encourage everyone to um, consider using Debian in this way, not only on the, in the technology, uh, adopting te technology, but also adopting the social background of having fun at work and um, enjoying work like this. Thank you very much. <laughs> Do you have any questions about anyone uh, like Debian or Spotify, please? Uh, the first question is, is pBuilder part of a, is, is pBuilder in the Debian repositories? The second question I have is about uh, Phi. This, um, I have a friend who's experimenting with Phi to do automated ins installation. And currently he's using um, x86 uh, for his architecture. Is it possible that, do you know, have you experimented with uh, using a different architecture on the server as opposed to the machines that you're going to install on? Yes, no, well, um, we use um, AMD64 servers, mm -hmm. and we actually also install from an AMD64 server, but it's not a problem to install any given kernel or architecture from um, another uh, server. That's not a problem. You, you can specify which kernel you're using and which repository um, uh, and okay. source is used from the, um, for the client to install from. Okay, thank you. More questions? I think you were a little bit faster. Uh, I just want to ask about the music. Uh, isn't there a problem with digital rights in terms of the world's music? Of course. Uh, we're working with the rights holders uh, to get licenses. Um, that's the reason why we're not launching the beta program outside of Sweden for now, because we only have licenses for Sweden. But uh, of course, we're talking to everyone. Is the client free software for Spotify? I'm sorry? Is the client free software? Is it no, unfortunately software? not. Then we wouldn't get any deals at all, I think. Sure, fair enough. <coughs> is there a web interface or is it just a, you know, Apple? No, it, it's, it's just a desktop client for now. Um, we're contemplating doing a flash-based thing or similar. It wouldn't wouldn't be the same. Wouldn't couldn't use the same streaming protocols. Wouldn't be the same experience. So um, yeah, I was wondering how that compares to the other streaming one, Pandora. Uh -huh. so. Well, f for one, it's we think a much better user experience. It's much more immediate, and you have the much more choice. You can actually make your own playlists and search for the music much more flexibly. Okay. How do you make it so quick? Because the, the, the latency seems very low when you go to choose the song and it just plays. And that's, I've not seen that anywhere outside of like Amarok or something. How, how do you make it so quick over a network? It just works. <laughs> <laughs> Will it still work when everybody else is using it as well, when you've got millions of users? Will it scale? Uh, we think so. It's designed to scale. It's okay. designed from the start with millions of users in mind. So this all goes over a P2P type network, does it? So yeah, I mean, the, 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 the thing with P2P networks is that they get better the more users you have, uh, right. at least unless they're not badly designed. But you say that you don't need to have all the gigabytes to store music, but if you're part of a P2P network and you need to be sharing music as well. Yes, you, you do need a local cache of at least partial songs. Okay, so everybody could have a bit of the song everywhere and then it just uh -huh. bit torrents in, pretty much. Sort of. Yeah. <laughs> That's clever. Yeah, what you saw here were just some random songs that I, I, I found, so they, they weren't cached, so this was actual streaming. Um, the audio client looks really good from uh, what I saw then. Um, it obviously reminds me of a lot like the iTunes client, but um, have you looked at uh, doing video? We're thinking about it. It's um, much harder, of course. Much more bad. I mean, the, the network is designed to be content independent. Uh, the thing with videos, it's about 100 times more data. So um, the question is whether today's consumer internet connections are really up to it. 
if you want high quality. Obviously, offset to that, the advertising opportunities you've got there with video content, obviously it looks like it could uh, possibly surpass traditional broadcast television, but the revenues are there too. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Thanks. In having a client app, how do you get rid of the fear of spyware? I'm sorry? In having a client app, which people have to download, how do you get rid of the fear of spyware? Is there, did you, were you worried that there would be spyware in the client app? Or? How, how do you convince your, your customers? Oh, I see. Uh, well, we have a privacy policy, of course. Um, I mean, you're installing our software. You have to trust us. We, we could do anything, I mean, yes. technically. Yeah. So it's the it's thing you have to handle legally and, and PR-wise. I mean, once you install someone else's software, there's no telling what they're doing. Anyone else? We'll both be around for the conference, so if, if you want to talk or play around with the client or whatever, just grab us. Okay, thank you.